My name is Boyd Varty. I think of myself as an artist of experience. My passion is to create transformational experiences for myself and others as a way to explore what it means to truly live. My central exploration is to live on what I would call the track of your life. To me, this is to live courageously towards the discovery of what you are called to and to what life asks of you. So much of how I live has been informed by my passion as an animal tracker. I'm following the trail of my own life and reporting back. This show is a daily broadcast from a treehouse on the Londolozi Game Reserve in the wild eastern part of South Africa. Londolozi is a 14,000 hectare wilderness reserve adjacent to the Kruger National Park. The land is home to lion, leopard, rhino, elephant and buffalo, as well as a variety of other animals. I'm your host, Boyd Varty. My goal is to spend 40 days and 40 nights alone in the wilderness to explore the archetype of the mystic in nature and hone my skills as a tracker. These are my daily stories. Day 3. Watch out for the small things. I didn't find a rhino yesterday. I did speak on the handheld radio to my father who does an evening safety check at 7pm from the camp. 4.40 come in. Go ahead, I say. Checking in, all in order. All in order here. And then he signs off with 4-0, out. Which has a certain ring to it. I sat by the fire. I will say that the nights are my favorite time by far. Full of night sounds, hyenas and scopsal calling all around the camp. Two of Africa's, the African night's most beautiful calls. The hyena is sort of like, and the scopsal calls every 10 seconds or so, just, It's easy when you're sitting around the fire to look up at the sky and think of all the ones you love. And I'll tell you, the fire on a dark African night feels like a friend. I read a bit by candlelight. I'm reading a book by Mike Boone called Zambezi. It's a tremendous book, a story about his solo journey down one of Africa's most famous rivers. Mike Boone is just an incredibly self-sufficient person. Once in northern Kenya... His daughter, who is a friend of mine, asked him if they should drive in a convoy through a dangerous section of, of the country. And he looked at her and replied, Jess, I am the convoy. Mike writes of his journey, The risks were high, but I believed acceptable. This confidence was based on extensive bush, survival, military, mountaineering and first aid experience. I also had a fair dose of humility, recognizing that I would never be able to fight the river, but would need to work with its rhythms and moods. I was really struck by the last sentence, how someone with incredible experience in nature almost always arrives in a place of humility to a greater rhythm. So I reminded myself of that, that I must focus on falling into this greater rhythm. My morning began with great excitement as I walked out of the camp to find... Uh, the tracks of a rhino bull crossing the entrance road of the camp. It was overcast, very dark, moody clouds, and in the flat light, the tracks are very difficult to see, but I began to follow. My eyes attuned to the crushed grass and the scuffed sand. Rhinos have distinctive toes. Rhinos have distinctive toes. There's a sentence you didn't expect to hear today. The toes make unique patterns on the hard ground. It's like a large three-leaf clover is the shape of the track. And to be a tracker is to be on a trail of clues, to notice and follow, listen, decipher. It's like my whole endeavor is pr contained inside of that activity, the simple process of notice, follow, listen, decipher. I found where the rhino had gone down into a dry riverbed to sleep. The tracks were extremely fresh. And then down in the dry riverbed, a beautiful imprint in the shape of a rhino in the rough sand on the ground. I could see where he had slept. 
There was a wet patch imprinted near his nose from where he'd been snoring into the dust. I knew I was very, very close. And then I could see where he had got up and spun around a little bit, deciding which direction to go. And then he had bulldozed up the far bank. And I followed. It crested onto a beautiful clearing that was framed now by huge dark ebony trees. And the whole mood of the morning in the half light of the overcast weather is dark. I continued around the bend in one of the trees and then there suddenly up ahead was the rhino. He must have been about 60 yards away. Rhinos have very poor sight and with the wind in my favor I had really no concern of being seen. So for a time I just observed him in secret. It was a pretty good feeling I will say as a tracker to level the scores with the rhino. Last night they had evaded me but today I have found them. It felt like a good way to start the day. At some point during the morning a helicopter flew over and for a moment I swear I felt like an uncontacted tribesman. <laughs> there are some things that I'm getting to know around the camp. I tell you this because it's making such an impression on me as a tracker. There are a few buffalo bulls that seem to sleep in the river and then come up onto the bank at night. I see fresh dung every morning. There is a genet cat which investigates. I see his tracks in the soft sand around my dry store's trunk. Also tracks of a little mouse at the edge of a fire pit. There are nesting giant kingfishers and pied kingfishers that flip, flit up and down the river calling. There is a flock of doves that comes to drink at the river's edge at the same time in the evening. I tell you this because I'm getting to know it at such a deeper level. Even after just a few days, I'm beginning to know the rhythms of movements and patterns of behavior of the animals in this area. I'm attuned to birds, sounds, smells. It feels very tactile to me. And it's an ancient feeling too, to like a hunter-gatherer, develop a kind of intimacy with my place. It makes me think of my mentor Renius, who is perhaps one of the last trackers on earth who grew up living off the land. And in that way he is rare. It's as if he's connected to another time. And thinking about that cast this whole experience in a new light for me. I was thinking about myself in 10 or 20 years. Who would know a time when they were totally tech free living in a tree? Maybe in the future this experience will make me very rare. A relic who knew a different time. Like an elder, you know, holding on to some forgotten way. Of course, in 10 or 20 years' time, there's also a chance that we'll all be living this way again. So it's hard to know. But to know this area as a co-inhabitant brings with it a very natural respect. And then things went south. I had my first tricky encounter with an animal. It all began unexpectedly when I put my t-shirt on after a morning run. A few seconds after I put it on, my entire body was overwhelmed by terrible red itching welts. Under my armpit was the worst, but then very shortly it was over my entire stomach and body. And I have to tell you that at this point I'm on fire. The itching is so intense that it's closer to like a burning. And that's when I realized I had been badly caterpillared. Now I know that I shouldn't scratch because as soon as you scratch it, you get it on your fingers and then transfer it to everywhere else you touch. But it's so incredibly itchy that you have to scratch. And my mind started <laughs> to play that song. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body's telling me yes. I broke and I scratched and it went everywhere. The welts erupted. Fuck, I need an antihistamine. So I dive into the medical kit. If you wanted to dial camping down to its core, you could probably dial it down to mostly rummaging for things you don't have. Fuck, I don't have antihistamine cream. Damn it. Where's Mike Boone when you need him? He would know what to do. I have an antibiotic cream. This parachute is actually a knapsack. I might as well have whipping cream. Plan B. Now I take all my clothes off and I run down the game path to the river. Naked man covered in welts in slip slops. Monument to unsexy. I get to the river and I leap into the shallow water. No crock check. Body still on fire. 
Damn it, the buffalo I told you about earlier is also in the river about 50 meters upstream. I scrub my body with coarse sand while having a stare down with an angry looking buffalo. Buffalo stampedes away. Raymond, the weird baboon log, watches all of this looking kind of judgy. Walk back to the camp, still naked. Body now still itching but also rubbed raw by sand. Apply antibiotic cream because I have nothing else. I should have just applied it in the first place. I glance at the sky and pray to God that it doesn't rain because this whole poetic enterprise of moonlit dancing on the river goes to shit if it rains. Cue rain. I'm now underneath the deck of my treehouse under a tarpaulin in what is less a rain and more what I would call a damp. There's just enough moisture to make the wood smolder and refuse to light. That type of a rain. So I must be with what is now. Or as Mike Boone says, I will need to work with its rhythms and moods. I am humble. I'll tell you that the last three days have been the best ten years of my life. I absolutely love it all. Four zero. Out. This has been another episode of the Track Your Life podcast with Boyd Varty. Follow us on Instagram at Boyd underscore Varty, Twitter at Boyd Varty, visit Boyd's website at boydvarty.com or subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player. Please rate and review this podcast so that more people can find and enjoy it.